We have to start with some breaking news. The Indiana Pacers, they have acquired all-star forward Pascal Siakam in a three-team deal that sends Bruce Brown, Jordan Nora, and three first-round picks to the Toronto Raptors. That's what sources told our Adrian Wojnarowski. So, Woj, how did this deal get done here? Uh, a lot of negotiation, a lot of different trade and package scenarios between Toronto and Indiana. Siakam is going to be a free agent this summer. He had leverage in these trade talks because nobody wanted to trade for pa Pascal Siakam without having some confidence that he would resign with them. Mm. And Indiana has that confidence. Tyrese Halliburton, uh, his relationship with Pascal Siakam, they talked. And, the, and, and in talking to those around Siakam today, he's eager to talk about an extension this summer uh, with Indiana. But the three first-round picks to this year, Indiana's own, and then a, uh, a, a lesser pick uh, that they have owed from uh, other teams, and then a 2026 first-round pick. But this is massive for Indiana. They tried uh, prior to the OG Ananobi trade to New York. Indiana was trying to see if they could trade for both Ananobi and Pascal Siakam. They didn't have enough to get that done, or they weren't willing to offer enough to get that done. Ananobi goes to New York, but then Indiana stayed on the Raptors. Kevin Pritchard, Masai Ujiri, the president of Toronto, the president of Indiana, kept talking. And then really late this morning, they finally landed uh, on an agreement. And now Pascal Siakam goes to Indiana. This is a team that offensively has been good as yeah. uh, anybody in a very long time in the league. And this is now a Toronto team, you know, really in a full rebuild. And Masai Ujiri's plan is to build that roster around Scotty Barnes, get younger players around his age. You saw that in the Knicks deal. Mm. And now three first-round picks uh, in this trade. You know, Toronto, again, moves toward a rebuild. And now there's an Indiana team, you know, that gets an all-star level forward to plug in. And, listen, you, you talk to players around the league, there are no shortage of guys who love the idea of playing with Tyrese Halliburton. Yeah. Siakam was among them. And one last thing, you know, when the league put in this new salary cap and this second apron and this real, real limitation uh, on the way big market teams could stockpile star players, you're starting to see now Siakam, mm. teams like Golden State or L.A., uh, others, it is hard to have three stars in this league right now. The, yeah. the league's goal was to start spreading that talent around. And that's part of the reason now Pascal Siakam lands with the Indiana Pacers. And now we see Tyrese Halliburton and Pascal Siakam team up on an Indiana team that went all the way to the finals of the in-season tournament uh, in 2023. Michael Wilbon, we know that Pascal Siakam was one of the most sought-after players as we got closer to the trade deadline. What's your first blush reaction here? Um, I care about postseason more than in-season. And that's what so we're looking they. at with, <laughs> yes, they do. But that's what we're looking at. So how good does this make the Pacers? I mean, let's set Toronto aside. It's rebuild. We'll get back to them in three years. Now, how good does this make them when Halliburton's out there and healthy again? I presume this means Buddy Heald is staying. Woj, is that a reasonable presumption or well, not? There's still a couple weeks left to the trade deadline. They do value Heald's shooting short term. You know, it remains to be seen if he's still with this team after the deadline. Well, even after, after the deadline, when we see where they are. So when we look at the top of the East and we look at Boston and we then presumably look at Milwaukee, Philadelphia, does this push the Pacers past the Knicks? Does it push them into contention, still defensively challenged with, say, Philadelphia? We're still looking at Boston, Milwaukee at the top of the East. But where, how high does this push the Pacers? I, I, don't, I, I still don't have them over New York, let alone Philadelphia, Milwaukee, or Boston. Okay. Uh, I do think this team has improved with Pascal on their team. He's an upgrade from Bruce Brown, essentially. Um, and Pascal's a guy who can run the floor with Tyrese's pace. The way he pushes the ball, you get sat, uh, Siakam out in the you know lanes. That that's that that could be valuable. The three picks going, mm -hmm. I do like that. Tyrese is this guy is 23 years old. I, I I look at OKC and how they had Shea a couple years ago, and he was still one of the best guards in the league. And they've had all these picks, and they keep surrounding him with new young talent as this team grows out. Yep. That is the risk they're taking, but again, obviously there is an assurance that he's going to be back there in Indianapolis. So for short, ter short term, they are better. So no, the Pacers aren't as good as Boston, Milwaukee, and Philadelphia. No, yeah. That can't be the benchmark for a trade like this, especially for a small market team like the Pacers. They can't go grocery shopping at the superstar grocery store. Like They have to get <laughs> who's available to them. And you just nailed the most exciting part of this, which is 
Those two dudes running the floor together, Tyrese Halliburton and Pascal Siakam, yeah. that is going to be a show. You have a shooting center in Miles Turner who can space the floor for Siakam. Pascal can guard every position on the floor for a team that has been abysmal at defense. Is this team going to be a favorite in the first round? No. I would expect them to lose in the first round if they get in. But ask the Bucks how fun this team was to play right. before this trade. Mm. Like, they're going to have a puncher's chance if they get in the playoffs. And the three picks, look, it's, I think Toronto actually did pretty good to get three first yeah. given his free agency. But you got to understand, two of them are going to be out this year. And so that obligation exhausts itself. And so the Pacers will have stuff to trade if and when they want to upgrade this roster down the line. They haven't handicapped themselves like the Clippers for seven, eight years mm -hmm. in draft equity. This team's going to be good. You have two all-stars. Pascal Siakam's an all-star. Whether he makes it this year or not, the guy's an all-star player. He's 29. Indiana can't be picky at one's 29, one's 23, yep. whatever he is. Like, this is going to be a really good and fun team, and sometimes you just got to have some fun in the NBA. Our teams like the 76ers, the Golden State Warriors, folks that maybe had an eye on Pascal Siakam, what are they pivoting to now that Pascal is headed to Indiana? Yeah, I, I don't think Siakam was really a serious consideration okay. for either of those teams because they knew that you were going to have to max him out this summer in free agency, and I think what – Golden State would have to give up. And I think Philadelphia is, I think they feel like they're working from a position of leverage. And they can be patient that maybe they could even get better out there. But uh, I think for Indiana, again, them having the cap space this summer, uh, that dulled the market because yeah. teams knew if I, even a team like Sacramento, if I trade for Pascal Siakam, Siakam without assurance or without confidence, he's going to resign with me. This guy can just walk, and we know there are teams with cap space where there's a mutual interest. That was Indiana. That gave Indiana leverage throughout these talks. I think a lot of the other deals we maybe see between now and the trade deadline with Siakam and Ananobi both now out of Toronto, you know, they may not be of the level of these players. Mm. It may be more role players moving around, but history shows us Strengthening, strange things happen before the trade deadline. Players become available who none of us expected to become available. It happens almost every year. I'm guessing it'll probably happen this year. We just don't know who it is yet. And look, to your point, I, I think Toronto did okay here because yeah. I don't think a lot of these teams are going to go all in for Pascal Siakam. He's shooting 31% from three, which makes him a tricky fit on some of these. He's been hot lately. And to, to me, like Philadelphia with Embiid, maybe we'll see where they go. Sacramento is the interesting one that I think had a big decision to make, and they've had a couple gut punch losses in a row. We'll talk about them. But I, I, I'm excited about this trade, and if you look at the roads not taken, who is the team that was just going to jump all over themselves to get Pascal Siakam? I'm not sure there was one right now. Yeah, Atlanta had been a team, go back through the summer, Ooh. who had tried really hard yeah. to get involved in that, and then I think they got to a point Empty. here where the idea of them – Trading for a player like that and having the confidence to re-sign them yeah. and maybe going in a different direction roster-wise, age-wise, closer to what Toronto is doing than Indiana. The secondary headline here seems to be, uh, oh, happy day for small market teams. I mean, it's speaking to Woj, the, the, the salary cap implications and which teams are able to get involved in the only ways they can get involved. I mean, we, we have learned by now the big star free agents – don't even necessarily go to New York. Well, Brooklyn, not not Manhattan. But this is the way. Texas. That's it, yeah, exactly, Austin. I mean, this is the way. You mentioned Sacramento, perhaps on deck. Uh, Indiana coming through with this trade. I, I I may be a little bit higher, and I, I'm I'm an old school defensive person first. I may be a little bit higher on the Pacers in the postseason than you guys. Mm. I mean, I mean, Siakam actually gives them some defensive presence. They yeah. have none now. You would think he'd come in with that, and Halliburton's got to be thrilled. Yep. I mean, it's just there's also a, you know about this better than any of us a spirit to that locker room, Austin. You would accept, you would expect to be boosted. Absolutely. I mean, now they're they're getting an all-star type player. They're losing Bruce Brown, who was a good role player, but now you're getting an all-star guy. You're giving also Halliburton in terms of pressure on his shoulders every night. He has another guy he can confidently go down the stretch with yeah. that he has confidence in who can handle his own. It makes them much deeper. And in terms of matchup with them in Milwaukee, another guy who you can throw at Giannis in terms of guarding him. Right. They have the Naismith guy who gives him problems, but now you're throwing a whole, another lengthy, mm -hmm. strong, competitive, 
you know, guy who can play both ends of the ball. And a coach in Rick Carlisle who knows how to use exactly. Better yeah. bring, better bring. That's why Buddy Hill's important shoes. now. Yeah, better bring he is. I mean, the shooting is they need shooting for now because Pascal's not a shooter. Anybody in Indiana you know? who somehow, some way, is unfamiliar with what Pascal Siakam is bringing to the table, just take a look here. Points, rebounds, assists for his career in Toronto. This is what you are getting in Indiana. Mm, it's a lot of points.